You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. With over 27 million weekly downloads listened to in 100 different countries, we're your one stop, one destination for true after show entertainment. I'm JC, and this is True Blood Season 7, Episode 7 Karma. Gotta have that karma. Mm -hmm. Always feeling that karma. So let us wrap around the table and introduce our wonderful host, starting with the lovely lady in what color is that? Like gray? Oh, is that, I thought it was like blue. <laughs> I can't. I did too. I, I was going with the palette here. <laughs> like, like, just gray. Light blue, gray mix. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's slightly rainy day. The lovely Sarah Strutt. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> and of course, no show would be complete with my Butch Cassidy, my Sundance kid. Hey guys, Scott Moore here. And of course, all right, After Buzz TV Nation, True Blood Nation, we have a very, very special guest in house tonight. And boy, I was looking you, you up. You have done some stuff. I'm telling you. A couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of things. You're yeah. an actor's actor, honestly. I mean, uh, I, that's a compliment. That's really a compliment, actually. I saw your highlight reel. And I was like, oh my gosh, I remember that Oprah moment with you when you guys did the Desperate <laughs> Housewives. That's yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, he also plays uh, Reverend Daniels. That's right, Mr. Greg Double G Daniel. <laughs> Put your hands together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. My and pleasure. we are going to dive mm -hmm. in. We're going to pick okay. your mind. Go right ahead. We want we want to get some answers okay. out of you tonight. I won't do any spoilers. I won't do any spoilers. Mm -hmm. Be careful. I, I know what's going to happen. Like, tries. <laughs> he will try very hard to get the spoiler from you. I'm, exactly. I'm a son of a car salesman. <laughs> I will try hard, but I think I've got my work cut out. So first off, let us start off with overall thoughts. Overall thoughts. I'm not starting today. I always start the overall <laughs> thoughts. I'm whole. JC, do you want to go first? Yes. Okay. I ha okay. I've been missing the last few weeks. Forgive me, guys, and. Because I definitely, um, I, I did watch the episodes. I've watched you guys. You were fantastic. And a quick shout out to Chris and Carol, who may be on her way because she was up in Comic Con. And mm -hmm. thank you for you, your fantastic weekend, week out. And thank you for she she brought Greg. I mean, she brought Greg here tonight. And so a big shout out to you. Yes. But you guys are fantastic. But I had a hard time with the last few weeks of the show. I had a hard time with last week's episode. And uh, what was the hard time that you had? Yeah. What me, is this it's, stemming from? It seemed. Just it was like a different spin on the series. It seemed uh, to me a lot of things were going. We had this um, party, mm -hmm. party for the passing and for everyone, mm -hmm. and a lot of things happened there. And to me, and I'm gonna get in trouble for this, it seemed not like True Blood to me. Really, like it seemed it, it harkened to me like to season one, yes, right. which was fantastic, which right. I love. But maybe I'm j I've just gotten so used to the action, 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 peril, peril, ah, peril. See. Mm -hmm. So maybe like how mm -hmm. a lot of people call Suki like. This is what the, the fans say, danger horror. Maybe I'm just the the horror, ho horror. Okay, yep, I'm gonna that would work. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I will say tonight's episode emotionally had me with every piece, every moment from Pam and Eric, from your piece, every single time. I, I'm, I'm back, I love it, I, 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 I'm glad to be back. Tonight's episode was literally one of my favorites oh, that great. I had seen, mm -hmm. honestly, great. so it brought me back. For the emotional content, because yes. see, yeah. last yes. week was what got me emotionally, or was it two weeks ago? I was tearing up twice, and that does not happen to me. I am a tough cookie. What I don't tear up. About? What oh, about the moment week? where we had Suki and Alcide in the jacket, uh, when mm -hmm. she had the pillow moment, I was, it was welling up mm -hmm. with the proposal. I'm, I was welling mm -hmm. up, um, and I, it was really hitting me emotionally. And this week, I think some of some of the emotional moments didn't get to me as much. Specifically, I'm going to talk a little bit about Sam and Nicole. I know oh, we're not yeah. talking about too, too much. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's because personally, I always wanted Sam with someone else. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She's too young for him. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. there's this weird maturity dynamic where now she's like 
the more mature one who's like, I'm standing up for my kid and my family, but I'm like, but you're like so young. <laughs> I, it's not clicking for me. Mm-hmm. And I've never, and so, and I feel like I was supposed to be on her side and I wasn't. Oh, yeah, I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And that bothers me when you know you're fighting for someone. Well, it's hard because you know, you know Sam so well. You've been with him for seven exactly. right now. And then so this. Uh, and I loved Luna. The interloper so much. sort of me comes too. in and starts <laughs> yeah. dictating what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing to ask someone to leave their hometown. I mean, it's yeah. not a small. It's not thing. an easy so, thing to do. You know, she's mm-hmm. just not as. I don't think she's just as familiar. So you're so familiar with mm-hmm. Sam. You like mm-hmm. Sam. He's a nice guy, little shapeshifter guy. Exactly. But you don't. You, you know. And, and, and the, the town. He's right. And the town, too. I love Luna. I was obsessed with their relationship. And you're right, he does fit into the town. He mm-hmm. does fit into the town. And she just seems like an outsider and in, in some ways. Right, uh, the, exactly. Uh, she, and she is in a way. Yeah, yeah, she was just kind of brought in, grief sex, hooking but up, and all of a sudden they're together. And now it's like, oh, now we're supposed to embrace her. Now but she there's wants to take outsiders away. that like fit. And right. then there's like outsiders who remain outsiders. And that was part of what I felt was being shown to us in this episode right. like there was a lot of mention of the town being crazy mm-hmm. i kept hearing that mm-hmm. word crazy like you all are crazy everything like that was just how they were describing mm-hmm. everything and when nicole said it i was kind of just like you're resentful that she said it, maybe. i'm like maybe yeah. i was like <laughs> maybe resentful. you don't belong here yeah, right uh, you're right like uh, yeah, maybe you can't keep up because everyone is crazy <laughs> right and you gotta men. keep up with yeah. the crazy but actually you know, in, in his own way reverend Davis is an outsider too because mm-hmm. i came in uh, i'm not from the town I uh, came in season three, you know, to mm-hmm. help Lady May. But I'm not I, now. I'm integrated into it, but right. I was kind. Of, but he didn't. I didn't sort of reject it, which was amazing to me. They didn't reject the, the right. undead, the, right. the, the whole bon temps, uh, mm-hmm. you know, history. Yeah, there, and, your, and and your character came in and and tried to you know work on fixing things and made a positive thing like helping build right. that church I think and come in May. and take I think he mm-hmm. truly I think he truly adores right. and, and, and now he's part of, the, of that town and that's the, the heart of it and that's why Lena. it works totally so much agree. because yeah. there is such a bond there that you want them to understand mm-hmm. yeah. like Look, in at your... the bottom of it it's at the heart of it is she's a lovely lady with a substance abuse problem if you ever love somebody mm-hmm. in your family or what outside mm-hmm. your family has a substance abuse problem, but they're good people mm-hmm. and you fall in love with them and you're just gonna fight tooth and nail to try and get them back. Right. And that's kind of a heart of their relationship to me that he is so fiercely independent, so fiercely loyal and adores her that I will take on heaven and hell, literally, I'll take mm-hmm. on heaven and hell to try and bring her back mm-hmm. to the center. Your eyes said that tonight. Mm-hmm. Your eyes, everything you just said right there, I, I captured when you were walking out of that yeah. door. I love yeah. working with Adina, first of all. I mean, I, oh, I, I gotta oh my give a shout out to Adina Porter. Oh, I mean, she's amazing. just, she just takes risks. I mean, we get it there and we really try and uh, find what the scene is about and take risks about it. But there's this level of I trust her and she trusts me so we can go places mm-hmm. and do things with mm-hmm. the scenes between Lady May or, and Reverend Daniels that just allows it to be grounded, allows it to be a little deeper. Do you talk about it before you go on set or do you kind nope. of play on set? No, we just try things. Yeah, with it. No, okay. we just so we know we read the script because we had a table read, but we're instinctual that way, and that's fine. Okay. We just get up there, and uh, I mean, we kind of know after a take whether something worked or not. So we may ask for another one, or we might say to the director, "Can I?" So we may try and color little things in between the, mm-hmm. the takes. But there's this again, this trust and this sort of uh, at the heart of it, we know whether something is working or not. And I just look into her eyes, and she looks into mine. I mean, that's basically all mm-hmm. acting is, right. it, you know, answering truthfully and, l- and listening mm-hmm. to what's going on and reacting. And I can do that with uh, Adina because uh, I know wherever I take it, wherever she takes it, we're going to go together with it. That's really and great that too works. that you have that connection and that, that you know yeah. that you're able to just do that. Very lucky and, and to have be working with her. Right? I also have that connection with Amelia. I was working with Amelia Rose Blair, who plays Willa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was tough for me. And right. I, I think yeah. it was episode three yeah. when I asked her to. Uh, when I ask leave. her to leave, when I rescind mm-hmm. the invitation to be in the house. Yeah, that was a little brutal. Yeah, oh, that was. But again, I fight fiercely for Lady mm-hmm. May. I mean, I like you, Willa. However, you know, my wife's a junkie, and right. you got right. all the stuff, so you got to go. Mm-hmm. But I but I didn't do it brutally. It felt like, you know, under other circumstances, we might have been friends. But yeah. I've got to save this woman ch- I love. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But Amelia is also, she, she's very trusting, so... Those those quiet moments and whatnot, we're not afraid to go there, not afraid to not dwell there for a while until we get the truth of the moment. That's true. That's I awesome. had, I think that your your character has developed so much because I was convinced at the beginning of the season. I think that we I all thought, were. I was thought I, I thought you were going to be a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. We did. That I we really did. thought. Well, I did too. Was, I, I, I was like convinced. I was like, he can't yes. be this nice. I was like, <laughs> and he's got these ulterior like, motives, and like, he's like, part of the church. I was like, and he's going to destroy yeah. the town. I tell you what turned it for me was when our uh, executive producer and the writer uh, Brian Buckner gave me that monologue, gave me that speech, mm-hmm. because from season three I was sort of like, is he's we're going to make a joke about Reverend Daniels? Is he sort of like a cad? 
you know, using religion, mm-hmm. hiding behind mm-hmm. religion so he can do all kinds of things. And then, but they always respected and honored the character. And then when Brian wrote that incredible speech where you find out my backstory, yeah. where I come yes. from, where yes. I'm heading, that for me settled, okay, I am part of this community mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So that gave the, and, and fans have reacted to that, that gave the, the reverent direction. And now we can relax. We don't have to worry about him being a kid. Oh, he's not going to break a heart. I was very worried. I was literally like, I was like, he's going to destroy something. I was like, who is sure. he plotting with? Mm-hmm. Convinced you were sure. like one of the bad guys. And then sure. I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm really so glad they fleshed, yeah. it, they fleshed him out that way. Yes, yeah, which was good. We need, I think we all needed yeah. that. I actually, thank the writer. Actually, <laughs> really, you know, I, I just had to thank the writer for the speech. It was just mm. so. Uh, it was just so intelligent, it was just so heartfelt, it was so sensitive that uh, it grounded me on the set. Well, I was gonna ask you, once you found out, when you had that speech, did you figure, well, I'm gonna stick around hopefully for a little while longer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, it it, it told me I was yeah. an essential, intricate part of the yes. story. Because mm-hmm. why give a character a speech like that, telling you all about his uh, his, his failings, the pain mm-hmm. he's had in his life, unless you're going to use that in some way? Mm-hmm. So you're investing in that character for some reason. So just being halfway intelligent told me, well, they're investing in me. So I don't know what's happening because I until I get the next script. But I know that they have some design mm-hmm. for for mm-hmm. Reverend Daniels. It was. A so at least we're we we're kind of on the same page there from the beginning, thinking he was involved with something like. Hopefully now we're going to see he's involved in something in the bigger Nefarious picture. Here. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so at least we're on the same. Okay, track finally, because at first we were like, God, he it, he's just too good to be true. I know, <laughs> even with his flaws that we all have. But speaking of invested characters, let us start off with Pam and Eric, and oh, Sarah's already riling up. You know, you say Pam, and I'm like, Pam's like one of my favorites, yeah. and I'm just oh, like, Pam, mine too. Yeah, Pam? of course. Yeah, Where's Pam? Love her, love her. You know, it's funny, uh, now that we're talking about Pam, this week, of course, is Comic-Con, and they had mm-hmm. the little sit-down, they had a panel, they had the panel with, uh, with, with most of the cast, and they asked each character who they like to be, who they like to portray besides their own character on the show. And half the cast said, Lala or Pam, and when it got to Pam, she said, well, Pam. Pam. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Because so, Pam's just like the perfect mix of mm-hmm. like everything. She's, she's like sassy and badass. Yeah, she's like, from she the like, hip. She's, uh, mm-hmm. she's so, oh. and she does it with so tongue in cheek. She's so tongue in cheek about the line. I mean, she delivers yes. some lines that would just be just leaden in another mm-hmm. actress. Mm-hmm. There's something about those lines. They're so clever, mm-hmm. but she just knows the right way to deliver yeah, those yeah. lines. Mm-hmm. So you right. fall in love with that character. So what's going on with the relationship with now? I was waiting and waiting and waiting for this for the introduction of this Mister Gus. Yeah. I was wait. I I read the Yakuza all the, guy. Right? The Yakuza guy. Yes. Yeah. Sarah's looking at me. I'm at looking me at you shocked. Like that's what you were waiting for. <laughs> yes, because they. You're said, waiting for Mr. Guy. I was waiting, <laughs> waiting for him to make his appearance. Finally. Yes, because I, I I read all the fan blogs mm-hmm. and whatnot. And they said there's supposed to be this Mr. Gus mm-hmm. and someone called the figure who I've yet to see. I don't know if it we got still cut haven't out. seen him. We got Mr. Gus mm-hmm. Jr. Okay. Yeah, he's Mr. Gus Jr. Yeah, right. that's true. Right. He is right. Jr. Right. Forgive me. Yes. Right. But so I was waiting because we're already, you know, we're five episodes in. Mm-hmm. I'm like, come on, let's, because let's get this moving because I know we have to tie up the storylines now. Mm-hmm. So it was refreshing to see and to see with this Texas twang. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Oh, Sarah, not so much. I'm just so shocked that what you were you're saying is you're waiting for <laughs> Mr. Gus. Gosh, she still hasn't moved past I'm that yet. Like, <laughs> I'm so stuck there. I was like, oh, uh, there's so many things we've been waiting for this season antidotes you know people oh. dying <laughs> so you're me. waiting for mr gus excuse me baking powder no what i'm saying is is because of, we're talking about eric and pam uh-huh. and so now right. we see the introduction of mr gus jr mm-hmm. and that's what i and that's pretty big shoes to fill i mean to be a foil to eric and pam i yes. i, I, I kind of gets where you're coming from in the Eric and Pam, if you're gonna take them on, you gotta be really badass. Yeah. I mean, these guys are like kick ass, really tough. So I guess you were looking for. A, He's sort got of my a, back. I love him. Well, I'm not saying <laughs> you were. I thought you were waiting for something like. Uh, you're big. helping me out. <laughs> no, no, because of the yakuza. I mean, right. just the depth of the yakuza, right. the, the, the mob. Right. Right. That's you know mm-hmm. that somehow. Okay, up to this point, Bill and Suki storyline. I've been waiting for that to develop. How is because supposedly we have a strong feeling that they're going to end up together in the end. And I, mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. see some movement there. But this season, for the most part, I really cared more about the storyline between Pam and Eric. Mm-hmm. Where we've seen the fleshing mm-hmm. out of Fantasia. We've seen the storyline of Ginger. We've seen so much with them. And you realize how much you love them. Mm-hmm. And you're worried about them dying. Right. You don't want to lose either character. You don't want what's going to happen to them. They, they've always had this maker and progeny thing going on. You know, of co- a relationship, of course. But is there... 
like even last week or the week before, I saw some like even some uh, the sexual they were yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got which that. From still, last week which too. still yeah. bothers me, but that's a whole other thing. But and, and but then you you get the whole other thing with Bill with the weird backstory of his Civil War days last episode, which didn't feel like it fit in with what was going on and. I got something on that you one, know? but that's for later. Yeah. I think I know why that's happening. So, well, we know there's a reason behind it, but it just felt like it was disjointed and kind of out of place with mm-hmm. everything. And like you said, we love the backstory with with Pam and Eric these past couple episodes and the connection, and it's been great. All right, so Mr. So Mr. Gus and because we all saw this, we all saw the show. Everyone watching us live. AfterBuzzTV.com, if you guys are watching us live, mm-hmm. hello, chat roll. But if you're not watching us live, go to YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, OneCast, and tell us what you think. Let us know what you think of Mr. Gr- <laughs> Mr. Daniel's awesome jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Please rate Jacket's and comment. the star. Yes, rate and comment us. Tonight. Thank you. No, so what's going to happen there? They've made a deal for Sarah Newland's head. Mm-hmm. Most part. Yeah. Which turns out to it be was. a very precious head. Mm-hmm. How is Sarah or Numi going to get herself out of this? Uh, she's the antidote. Right. That's she is her way antidote. out. Yeah. She well, is? How, yes. She's the, she swallowed the only antidote mm-hmm. that was made. I mean, she's central to everything right. now. That's so her yes, bargaining chip. She's a Buddha. Her, exactly. That's her bargaining chip. She's a chip. Buddha of yeah. the world. And she's all about peace she's now. She's going to save yeah. everyone, including uh, her sister. Yeah. I, I mean, She's going to get it bad. That's all I'm saying. What I don't understand is how they kind of point... I mean, this is jumping. They have, you know, this whole meet the sun dilemma it was i thought it was done well like the whole chain thing whatever great fast forward you get to the house amber's healed yay is sarah newland gone already is she escaping why didn't she just tell them i am the cure why she told no one she's the cure if she's changed being Hmm. she's such a wonderful person why has she not cured anyone yet like if you found out you were the cure to a giant disease and you're a brand new person, a long time ago. wouldn't you be like, oh guys? Not if I was Sarah Newland though. Yeah, Sarah Newland always has, it just seems to me she has something up her sleeve. Right. Because always, it's like she could have done a long time ago. If she knows she's precious enough to be the bargaining chip, mm-hmm. the center of attention, which she loves which, anyway, mm-hmm. then hell no, I'm not gonna tell people I'm the anecdote until I can trade it for something that's gonna get me further than where person. I wanna go. She's a new me. Yeah. But is she I've tried really, those some religions though, in my thing. time she, too. Exactly. Is she exactly. really <laughs> How spiritually aware is she now? Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. If she really was, she would embrace the Numi and she would if become she the well, that world begs and the give question. her blood yeah, that, as the new savior. Can I ask something about, since we're talking about this, because everyone's kind of intertwined, as usual, mm-hmm. on the show, with Gus Jr. and Eric, why didn't he just kill Eric and Bill in season five? Because we're blaming Sarah for everything, but they're the ones that blew up the true... They gave the, the okay for the True Blood factory explosions and whatnot and turning before even Sarah got involved. Mm-hmm. So why... You is think it's mis- misplaced? It shouldn't be all on mm-hmm. Sarah? It should be on the... Yeah, I'm Bill Those other guys. If we go back, I'm just saying, just something that just popped mm-hmm. in my head. Because right there now. were two more seasons to go. <laughs> okay, well said. Well said. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> that have been so, too easy. Sarah's, uh, Sarah looks perplexed right I'm now. I'm just thinking. Oh, good. Don't worry <laughs> about okay, it. Okay, I'm uh, just... Well, yeah, yeah. Sometimes things pay off like later <laughs> when you right. don't expect it to. They have a complex relationship, the Yakuza and Pam mm-hmm. and everyone who I'm like... you. They have co- they go between these common enemies and like hating each other. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we saw that. He's walking around with the jaw of this guy who he's had, you know, years and years of resentment towards. Like you never know when they're going to be your enemy and when they're going mm-hmm. to be your friend. Right. It really just depends on the moment. And that's why Sarah Newland's character is constantly interesting is because she fluctuates right. She's always so bargaining. Man. She, mm-hmm. she's, she's, she's bargaining all the time, all trying the to find time. the strongest she's position. Always Never the reveal your hand, keep your you know, mm-hmm. cards close to the vest, and let's see, let's check out and have no revelation it's until like, it benefits you. She's like a very interesting <coughs> parallel to me to Sookie. Because like Sookie's always also a center of attention and always also a bargaining chip in mm-hmm. her own right. way. Um, but she's one that you like desire. She's always been the focus of love and affection. And Sarah mm-hmm. Newland is like constantly this focus of like, hate right. and so you have the two of them kind of traveling throughout this and now as their parallels with Suki seeming to have some sort of ability to accelerate at HPV and you have Sarah Newland with the cure it's just constantly you have these two women that are um, just a lot of drama there is I mean I love <laughs> the is. drama I love the show so great but just like they just kind of move and everyone just spins around yeah, but them. Suki's always trying to do the right thing right. I mean she mm-hmm. she's constantly trying to keep herself on some sort of moral mm-hmm. righteous or p- path where sorry Newland 
<laughs> sort of tries things on in like a, like a, like my jacket, and she mm -hmm. takes it off. She tries it on, and she takes it off. It's not them. You never believe that something has really affected her deal. No. Suki, you always believe Suki is. Oh, poor thing. Oh, and she's trying to work it out. And we sort of relate to her because she's a she's a moral person. She's a sweet person who's just trying to work and it out. And she's trying to do the right thing where you said, like, yeah. Sarah, is, she's trying to do what's best for Sarah. He's mm -hmm. totally narcissistic. And, and narcissistic totally and narcissistic all about her Sarah, absorbed and, compared and, to and, Sophie, so outward. Like you said, the, the opposite. She's the opposite of mm -hmm. that. She's always trying to do what's best for herself, the community, her friends, you know. Yeah. And, and. Exactly, you know, but they're yeah. just like both these on these yeah, no, high-powered yeah. trains, just absolutely like mm -hmm. charging, and everyone's crazy. orbiting around exactly, yeah. and then running mm -hmm. into each mm -hmm. other. Now, out of that <laughs> dynamic, now you did you ever have a scene when uh, with Alex or Kristen or or let's see, any, no, no, that, uh, no, no. It's, it's funny for, for, for me. Some of my favorite scenes are when I'm in the church because I get to see most of the cast mm -hmm. there, right. and I still haven't seen those people there. But no, uh, that's why I get to see. Well, I've seen Alcide, of course, Adina. I've seen. Uh, Ryan, but yeah. no, no, I have no interaction with them at all. Yeah, my my storyline really doesn't parallel. So, yeah. but my, I love it when we have the church teams because it's also the sense of the community being together, mm -hmm. and I can appeal the actors also. They're like, yeah, 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 go, Greg, go, go, <laughs> with the, you know these speeches in the church or whatnot. But otherwise, I may not see people for. Uh, Stephen and I hadn't seen each other. He directed the first opus, mm -hmm. uh, episode, Steve Moyer, and. I didn't see Steve. I saw him at briefly at table reads, but to actually work with him and talk with him was it was just a pleasure. It was it was it was a pleasure. So yeah, you could be on that show for months and not interact with, with someone who's in people. a different storyline. Yeah. I've heard that that he, um, Bill and Anna brought that up at Comic Con that they do not they wouldn't see each other at work. They would talk to each other when they get home. We do a table read, uh, of course, of the episode, and yeah. then we go off to our separate little worlds. And unless you're involved in that storyline. You don't see anybody. Mm -hmm. So many times it's the, the table reads are like, wow, nice work last week. Oh, I love what you do. <laughs> yeah, great. Just sort of catching up and saying, you're right on the track, but we never get to work together. Well, and I'm glad that you brought up Bill's character. And before we ask you if you ever had to carry the toad of death, that's <laughs> <laughs> you guys know about the toad of we death. We know about yes, the toad. We do. You guys are, who, who gave that information up? <laughs> they will die. We're super <laughs> We've known about it for a while, death. I think. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we had it. It was a couple seasons ago. I think it was Tara Buck. Who told you about the toad? I think she was the one that talk, told great. us about it. Don't spill the beans. Isn't there know, nothing right? sacred? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> not here. No, Everything's no. negotiable. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. Okay. Much. Okay. <laughs> but let's move into Bill and Sucky and Bill contra. Uh, c Getting, getting diseased. Hep mm -hmm. super Did you see that one coming, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you see that? No. Uh, no. No. I mean, once we found out with the teaser last week, we all kind of assumed that it was from the instance of her getting covered with blood. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe, you know, something slipped in her eye. Like sure. how they verified that it was mm -hmm. right. in the cut. Um, but I was not expecting Bill to get sick. But once Bill got sick, that's when I knew that someone had to f find the cure. Mm -hmm. Because if you have both Eric... And, and Bill, Bill sick, and it seems pretty dire, then something's about to change. Then you're about to get some answers mm -hmm. because you can't have this many people in your main cast like in danger. Right, you, you just, killed, you just killed off Tara at the top of it. You yeah. killed Alcide, and now you're going to do the two. Uh, right, the two. Like, uh, right. But that's why I felt like last episode was that kind of game changer episode where now we're mm -hmm. going on that different path and so it's kind of like that reset button episode five and now we're kind of moving in and mm -hmm. now we're going to start getting these and answers and they've already and so they gave us an answer today and mm -hmm. they opened up two cans of worms like you mentioned one i think uh mr gus is going to be something mm -hmm. um also another one we'll get into later and now we have the antidote so they mm -hmm. are they are Converging, navigating traveling, yeah, exactly. like where yeah. we're going you know one thing i love about this season i think mean, i'm sorry it's the last season but the risks it allows the writers to take mm -hmm. because you know this is it right and we are loyal and we, we really do love our fans so how do we end this up not in an easy way but at the same time how do we sensationalize as much as we can right. in a good mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. so some of these risks i mean when i got the first script and i saw the terror the first few minutes i thought they're not going to do that they're not going to do that that's what we they all thought we're like that. there's no way she's actually yeah, really dead yeah. in the first but, episode but you know you have to go on in a blaze of glory i mean in mm -hmm. terms of taking mm -hmm. of course it has the internal logic make all make sense and everything but take the risk this season there's not going to be right. another you, one you so they're the stretching risk. as far as they can to see what can we push what kind of boundaries this season mm -hmm. that defies anyone's expectations of what's happening and like I said, when Tara got it, when Alcide 
feed mm-hmm. God. I thought, enough already. <laughs> Stop killing these people You're off. Like, Please, stay <laughs> yeah, a little Let's absorb it a little bit. Let's exciting. absorb it yeah. before you sure. go off somebody No, else. it's like a train, man. It Once is. you jump on it, you got to stay on it. Yeah, Whew, it's it's no time. Time. intense. Are you thinking, and so as Sarah was alluding to, that Bill and Eric are going to be saved at the end? Someone's going to be well, saved. Well, I think, I think maybe one person. I don't know if both will be saved. Yes, I agree. I don't know if I'm ready to say both. Are, because, I, again, like you were saying, it's like now you can take all the risks you want to take and you can go out because there's nothing holding you back from... Because mm-hmm. now the whole show is ending, so you can... And it's either... W- if it comes down to, you know, Eric and Bill and it being put on Sookie mm-hmm. to have some sort of responsibility, mm-hmm. then one of them is going to die. And mm-hmm. I'm, I think we kind of... I won't shake it. my head. I exactly. won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to look at his eyes. I'm like, is going to get anything away? But then if they, like, separate their fates into, like, Sookie's responsible for Bill mm-hmm. and Pam's responsible for Eric, because they're, mm-hmm. kind of cha- they're kind of separating them a bit. They, I feel like they kind of, they've been pushing Sookie and Bill together, and they've been pushing Pam and Eric together, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. had that moment a couple episodes ago where Sookie was, and Eric almost had like a little bit of a farewell, yeah, like it felt did. like they were mm-hmm. closing things Correct. up, so that would be my only hope for them both living, is if Pam takes responsibility for Eric, and Sookie takes responsibility for Bill, but if it's all put on Sookie, one's dying. Right. That's how it works. Hmm. That's my form. That's a good. That's a that's a good one. Even though I still think, even if they both don't come together, one may still die at the end, anyways. Yeah. Oh no, they might all be dead. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) The tricky thing about this last season, I mean, it's great to take risks, but you also have to honor the characters Mm -hmm. you've created. So it's Mm -hmm. great to take all the risks in the world, and I mean that. But you have to honor the 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 track that you created. Mm -hmm. You just can't suddenly turn and and Mm and, you know you have to try and honor. And that's a real challenge to try and stay true to these people, especially because it's going to be bye bye. Mm -hmm. So now we do it in a way that honors who they've been, who we've self selling them in, and you accepted them as. Or are we just going to do something totally unrealistic and obviously falling on the side of let's push it, but also let's honor who these Mm -hmm. people are. I think Al Ball he he wrote that in the beginning of the series that it was always about Bill and Sucky. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. the heart of the the whole show is Mm -hmm. Bill. yeah. Yeah, which so, is a love story and that's yeah. that's the trickiest yeah. part because for the last few seasons Bill hasn't been very likable right. or re, you know right. redeemable so to get him back to that level right. and who saw I don't know if anyone caught this yeah. when Bill was in the or I'm sorry when Sookie was getting tested for the Hep V if you looked at the vials one of the vials said ball on it oh I, see. Oh, I didn't yeah. see it I was trying to look that's at the names because I was I was trying to look and that see what, if they were going to put anything see? in there Interesting. Didn't catch it. Inserted. Very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nerded out. Sorry. <laughs> no, what I find kind of interesting about this whole Sookie Bill thing is they did build up, I guess, audience resentment towards Bill. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know that he hurt her. He lied to her. There's been times where he's almost killed her. And then we have the line this season where he was like, I owe you everything. Mm-hmm. And I know it wasn't on purpose, but in the fact that she's the one that has in a way given him this and there's like this I you obviously f- know she feels guilt she feels like she's part of it and I'm sure it's going to get worse when she finds out it's an accelerated version because of her I almost felt like it's a horrible thing to say but it kind of evened out a little bit of the paying field where like you've both hurt each other mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. might That's not great. necessarily yeah, have always right. been on purpose yeah. but it's you both are intertwined with each other's like fates and life mm-hmm. and death and da- putting each other in danger yeah. now because so he hasn't really ever put Bill in a ton right, of right. danger. It's always been Sookie getting in a ton of danger because of Bill. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could argue, argue Warlow, but I'm not going to go there. Even was like, even then. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's now they've both kind of reached this level where in some way they've hurt each other. And I'm like... And just like, mm-hmm. you know, any relationship. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. It, again, you know, I always thought the vampire stuff is great. It's the backdrop to the, to the, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the show, but it's about relationships the show basically is about how to how do you love someone who's flawed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and you're you're and that includes you so how do you whether you're undead dead or whatever <laughs> how do you love someone who's flawed and how do you nurture a relationship how do you keep it going because that's really what i think fans early tune into the action stuff is great the vampires and the werewolves are great but the heart of the story is still is still a love mm-hmm. story right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know Scott, you wanted to bring up the fact that when um, Bill, when he found out about Hep V and making the proper arrangements with his lawyer, and that's well, Sarah, keep going. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, keep and, going. And, no, no, and, and Bill's, you know, you could see the anguish in his face 
Uh, and of course, let's give a quick shout out to the amazing kills that Bill has throughout the arc of the whole show, yes. because literally how he disposed of the <laughs> I know the, the lawyer and her lovely assistant was again wow. top uh, ten. Yeah, it was. It was. And I, and I and I love the whole scene. Anyways, first first of all, I'm like I realized I should be going back to law school immediately so I can go help out the vampires with their heavy <laughs> because that, there's a lot of money to be made apparently there in yeah. that business. But I loved it. Brought up the whole campiness that I love so much. It's like there they are sitting in the in the office with the bad Muzak and the little, you know, take a number thing. And it was just fun. And I, and I felt like it was great to see. I love when they have that campy fun of that, those yeah. type of scenes. And, and you know, we want to kind of kill lawyers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's and basically that, that kill the lawyer. At the end. Exactly. It's it's like, like, let's get to... Oh, they make so much money. They're vultures. They're, they're exactly. creatures. And they're worse than the vampires. So kill the lawyers. Right. I didn't really realize that, which, which made that so scene so much fun. fun. I agree with you. I totally agree with you on that. Because they did that. You don't. I don't agree. Because you're screwed up your face. I love the scene. I love the you know kind of reflection on society yeah. i love the lawyer what i don't love is the the logic logical side of me that's like bill is so rich he has so many assets he's had personal assistants personal mm -hmm. bodyguards he doesn't have a lawyer he hasn't done his will once since the 1800s but or but, but but on on, on the but a lot of people don't do wills that maybe should. And I know that just from personal His experience with family members. For forever. But still, people don't always do that. They're not, that that's the thing. And, that's right. and, and so it was realistic you, in that sense. You don't think he would have his own attorney? You well, I'm not saying he wouldn't necessarily well, he'd be dead attorney, by now. I mean, wouldn't the attorney be dead by now? I mean, he's lived hundreds and hundreds. Of, so whoever like, he did have that drafted whatever in 18, 18 whatever, wouldn't they yeah. be like dead I just feel like very successful 2000s? people who live in giant mansions and have big book deals and at one point were vampire gods mm. have and were public figures <laughs> on TV have Should their have own attorney. Lawyers. I feel like maybe, I, he, maybe I, he doesn't trust the terms. I, know, I do, as well. He shouldn't. That's cool. Kind of like what they brought up in this episode. It was yeah. like, oh, you know. But I do. But I also see a lot of people that don't do those type of things because right. they're not, in, and and they're not in that mind frame. So yes, I get what you're saying, and I get the like, criticism. But on the great. flip side, yeah. I get people I, I'll not having credulity on this one myself. And say, I mean, since 1894. But at the same right. time, if you're a vampire that can live, so who knows when? And you're, you're not thinking years. about those things. I think we're really like drawing a microscope I on mean, a, such a small little thing. I think it is, but I get it. I get it. The the social issue behind it, right? That's and that right. I love. Yeah, that's right. And that I the social comedy. The lawyer has no moral center. That she's a totally reprehensible person. That mm -hmm. she's using death as a way to enrich herself. I, I mean, to me, that was the mm -hmm. greater evil than Bill sitting there with the, with the poor guy with veins, yeah. the vampire. Th that, that how and, could and, you? Oh, I was gonna say that and the social commentary too about just you know the the difference and like oh they're the others and. You know the way they had signed the law, where they can't pass on to their. Pro I mean, it was very hypocrisy, clear. That, hypocrisy, that hypocrisy. I agree with. Yeah. Yeah. That I but that's the power crazy. of the scene, yes. I think, than the actual mm -hmm. who owns a lawyer. But mm -hmm. the like, power of. Ex I completely agree with you guys on that point. Completely, I I love all of that. It's just like the only factor is that you have Bill. Like if it had been like maybe a different character, mm -hmm. I don't know who kind mm. of wasn't as stable or didn't have as much. It just was very interesting to me to have Bill in his you know really nice suit, and on one hand you have like the mailman, which is part of the social commentary. But I'm like, but in real life he wouldn't be there. Let's go to the fans. So fans, do you think <laughs> yeah, he would have yeah, a lawyer? No. Do you think Bill should have had his own lawyer? lawyer on call I should have always had a lawyer. Today. Right. Do you have a lawyer for your uh, a living trust or something like that? <laughs> After yeah, Buzz TV <laughs> Nation, we have our weekly question. Do you think Bill should have had a the lawyer? lawyer? There we go. His own lawyer, right? Let yes. us know on YouTube. Be sure. The things yeah. that I know. I know. I'm yeah, horrible. It's a good, it's a good it's point, good, but yes. Yeah. I, I agree. He should have a 24-hour lawyer on call. <laughs> but I agree that the way he dispatched her was just classic. It was just beautiful. And the guard or the, the, the bodyguard that walks and pencil. runs into the room. Yeah. So good. And, you know, with that said from him with his fire and just everything that's going on inside of Bill, mm -hmm. he goes home. And that's where I nearly lost it. Oh, God. To see, you know... Because in the beginning of the episode, you see uh, Bill and Jessica. Bill's about to go off to the lawyer's office, mm -hmm. and he doesn't. He doesn't. Jessica asks him, "What's right?" What's he doesn't wrong? confide in her at all. Yeah, about and what's not, going on. Well, but the thing is, neither of them do. That was Jessica's such a good conversation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. everything in the unspoken. Oh, it was totally. So That's good. That's strong writing. That is strong writing. So right. It's all what was in the subtext. Nobody's mm -hmm. giving up their uh, the truth. Mm -hmm. And more so, no, and exactly, and it just it goes further to because they're trying the, to protect each other. That's yes, why mm -hmm. they're trying to protect each other from the hurt. Or the pain of I'm sick, you're dying. No, no, we don't want to talk about Maker that. Maker and progeny, right there, mm -hmm. and they're a reflection of each other. Mm -hmm. And so, for them, this the is a show anyway. to watch. We get it. We we understand <laughs> the nooks and crannies. You know, and then the book and the the other side of that when he gets there, 
and Sookie and Jess, and he's he's been caught. Mm-hmm. He has nowhere to go. Right. He's mm-hmm. completely vulnerable. He's open. This is it. This is me. And this it's still in the unspoken, like from beginning Just to end look. with all of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I really loved is like. The first it was the verbal communication between him and Jessica, and you just knew everything that they were saying was just the opposite of their thinking. And then to have that final moment where he comes in and it's just eye contact yeah. and love and yeah. sorrow, and it was all in the unspoken. And I, I thought that was just it was done. So I mean, it's well. the two people that love him most in the world. Uh, they are mm-hmm. trying to figure out what, mm-hmm. what what can be done. It's like getting the news of a, an impending death of a of someone close. Oh, the yeah. two yes. people who love him most, and it was a beautifully done, yes, it beautifully was. played. Mm-hmm. Just they gave it space. And I say again, yeah, our directors and our writers, I just you know, in HBO, they're not afraid to give a moment space and time mm-hmm. rather than rushing into. And even though the show is like this fast paced thing, the moments that land, the moments that they want you to take in and be emotional, you see the camera just drifts. We just mm-hmm. stay on these actors, these wonderful actors, and and, and you walk away going, mm-hmm. oh wow, that really affected me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. kind of the power of true. And blood. then the, sometimes they also give them, they give them the moments with each other to connect. They also give them the alone moments. For instance, like another, like gift I felt like it was like to Jason. They gave him two in the car moments, which you don't technically like they don't they're not necessary. Right. They're not action packed. But it is a good moment for him to show that he is struggling or that they do give actors just kind of that okay, think space. Yeah, yeah they're right. breathing like, space. Mm-hmm. Wrap yeah. their minds around it and it lets us catch up with them. Right, we don't have to and cut also to everything transition all the time. into their yeah. story. Because sometimes it is moving so fast and so much is going on that as the audience, I want that breather too. I mm-hmm. want to be able to get in their headspace because it is in, they're all in these such heightened circumstances that I need to be able to readjust myself. So I'm like really thankful that they do that and they write right. those Right, you can't keep it accelerated in. all the time mm-hmm. or it becomes comic book kind of, yeah. mm-hmm. it becomes unreal. You can't, and people really do need a moment to just breathe, just take that cleansing breath of what's going on and assess it. And, and the show is not afraid to do that. Yeah, which is so helpful. And sir, I love the fact that you alluded to Jason. And I, I think I knew we were going to flip topics here just since we're going with the flow. That is just, I was waiting for Volcano Violet to explode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> waiting for this. Violet. And boy, did she. And I think it's just the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. As we show up and I'm like. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm walking away with no with the kids at the end. <laughs> you, you think that something's coming? Yeah. <laughs> so th- I want to find out what is Violet's end game? What's her plan? I mean, we. Greg can't know. answer this. No, I can. I, I, I can't answer that. <laughs> no, I'll let you guys go first without revealing it. You guys go first. No, I, no, no. I, we want to hear you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I feel like what we know of Violet is that she is we spoke just to her last a, week right yes. she's so, just mm-hmm. she's wonderful but she also has her character can be very aggressive and very strong and i thought like the only thing keeping her in check was jason mm. and you kind of saw that a little bit where like when they were like on the rampage to find the mob she, jason was kind of the one holding her back mm-hmm. cuz she was very aggressive with mm-hmm. all the townspeople like she's always been very aggressive but it's like always been well jason's here so i'll i'll, I'll maintain I'm my sure. cool sometimes mm-hmm. and now jason's not there so yeah, i'm kind she, of like Psh. well that's what she was like the like you said it was a good analogy like the volcano was like just starting to yeah. rumble hadn't erupted yet but i was think okay this isn't <laughs> but i was like you thought she was going to kill him no, I was like thinking when she went down on him. Yeah, I, was I thought like, so oh too. Oh my god, no, the vampire teeth! She's, yeah. gonna, she's, she's gonna, gonna, just she's chop gonna it right off. off, cut it right off. I was right like, off. who wants to go <laughs> some of the vampire teeth? I'm yeah. like, I agree. No, I, I was with that too. I really did. I was like, she's gonna get him back, and it's gonna be <laughs> awful, right. and she's gonna hold that hostage right. until like he apologizes or does something to be able to get back in her good graces. So I wasn't expecting her to do Why that you and then walk away. I never <laughs> thought of that. Just, that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, she's sure. got fangs. Yeah. She's got very good fangs. And he and wronged her. I mean, he betrayed he her. her. And you do not betray that. Violet. No. And that's yeah. funny that you guys felt brought bad for him. Like, I love it that it's almost like the fans are writing, you're, from the, you're on the show, but no. But that would be almost just because Jason's character throughout the whole history mm-hmm. of the show is... He slept with more, the most characters out of anyone in this. Besides well, her, and then for him to lose his manhood there, right. Mm-hmm. Right. just I mean, but but I digress. Um, I want to know more. I've always wanted to know more about Violet. Mm. I have what, what her reasoning. I almost would like more, a little more of a backstory, mo- another like mm-hmm. snippet yes. to find out what's going to motivate that pain because she's always been this uber aggressive woman, you know, a mm-hmm. vampire. Mm-hmm. Now I want to find out what other facets to her, even though we're down to f- what, four episodes now. Mm-hmm. So, 
She's, I always felt she was stuck in the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the few illusions they've given us, the writers, is that mm -hmm. you know she came from a very violent place. Mm -hmm. So now she's in this contemporary society here, and it just doesn't fit. So she's trying to love this man in a way that you know we're all sensitized now, and in the give and take relationship. Mm -hmm. But she seems to just have these ties. And again, none of this is written; it's just alluded to. Sometimes she seems to have these ties to this violent past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yes, when yeah. she did, when men were you know exactly Viking well, like. So she doesn't fit. It doesn't feel like no, she. No, and she but she does say that. Like even tonight, she says, oh, "I'm in a you know different time, and I got to yeah. use that. I'm in this time now." And at right, least that's a flaw. It up a few times that she's, she's brought had that hundreds up. of years to evolve. Right, that's what's odd about that too, because she's mm. been around, but she does bring that up a lot about being in the wrong time. And yeah, she says that again tonight. You know, it's funny. I don't know if we mentioned if you guys mentioned it last week. There was a very poignant scene between when um, Andy was given um, the wedding ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jessica felt she thought that ring was the most beautiful thing in the mm -hmm. world, and Violet was just like ah, right. this paltry thing. So mm -hmm. it was just mm -hmm. writing on the wall. So I know we can't ask him, but we're gonna ask a little bit later. Do they end up together, Jason? And we talked a little we bit about, about this. And what did you guys come up with? What did you think? You can go ahead. No, I. I <laughs> I'd say this I'd is only a half hour show. No, no, no. But I was saying I think that they would end up together. That Je Jessica and Jason would end up together. I think that they're pushing but for that's that. That's what they're pushing. I think for they're that. pushing for a couple relationships. Mm -hmm. um, what I said last week is that I think Jason and Jessica are better fit than at this point. Since Violet's gone off the deep end a little, <laughs> I'm going to say maybe it is better for Jason and Jessica. I need to see them having more regular time together. Um, I feel like they've had a lot of love moments where it's been in the wake of Hoyt or in the wake of grief or in the wake mm -hmm. of something going wrong. They, I haven't seen like just, they, they had like one moment of normal time. I need more. I need more mm -hmm. to like, like them as a relationship. I want to go see them do something or have fun. I don't know where their true love is stemming from because I haven't seen it. I'm not against them. I just need more. Well, Jason's mentioned the fact that he loves her throughout all her, he loves all of her. Through all her flaws, through all her good, all the good, all but the bad. But they haven't had that much time together. <laughs> Physically, they haven't been together a lot. Of time. Uh, okay. No, I just mean like. Like you want normal time. You want them to going going to a dinner and a movie. Mm. That'd be weird. Or like <laughs> I don't know, some sort of normal date where it's not like impacted by all. Like we have seen Suki go through so much, but I can tell you that she she had lovely moments with Bill mm -hmm. or dating moments with Bill. Even with Alcide, she had dating moments with him. I have not felt that as much mm -hmm. with Jessica and mm. Jason. I don't know if we're going to get to that, though, uh, just because of the time constraints. But um, like for, we have to kind of go back to what they had maybe in the past, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't the best setup. I think mm -hmm. that's what we're going to have to deal with, and then we're going to have to take that leap of faith if they try to bring them back together, that that's why from their past and yeah. everything. That's like, I don't know. Who I'm rooting for now is James You're and Lala. You're romantic, which is great. <laughs> yeah. There's oh. certain couples that I root uh, for, and I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, you get pulled back and forth. James and Lala. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I like them. I do too. And you want them to be happy. One like of the best says. speeches, monologues ever by, of course, Nelson last week. Mm -hmm. It was good, but we had our issue. I had my issues with it. Really? Yeah. What okay, we talked we'll, about. We'll get into. Okay. A little bit. We talked about it last week. We can't go that long, guys. No, so we can talk. So we can go we on can, forever. We can be here for hours, and he's like, mm -hmm. "We gotta go." <laughs> get, get to my scene. Get to my moment, which you moment in the sun. It was a fantastic. Once again, I, you. you know, I, I have you ever seen like those talk shows where they have like you know Jay Leno and he has some he'll have someone on the show and they show their early moments, you know, and the, and the actors like, oh no, you're bringing this up, right? Well, we wouldn't be remiss if we didn't do something like that. I don't know if we have my it was my engineer has it. Uh, who do we have in the booth tonight? I think we got Phil back yes. there. Do we have Phil? Going on but I think Phil. he's Indeed. probably there. Yeah. Oh, he might he might have stepped out for a moment, taking care of a few fires. No, but he's there. He's there. We have a little moment. I don't know if you got in the email of um, Mr. Daniel, his audition for True Blood. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord. We'll pull it up. But in the meantime, we want to we want to talk about how the you know how it came to be. Mm -hmm. How did you know call from the agent? I imagine, but you know it's it's kind of a special story because I wasn't there. I was on the East Coast doing a play 
and I had heard of True Blood. I had watched it because of Adina. I had actually mm -hmm. a pre-existing relationship with Adina as friends mm -hmm. uh, in doing theater in New York. So I knew of her on the show. I loved her work, mm -hmm. what she was doing on the show. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really good. Cool. She's got a show that she can really shine in. And then my agents called to say, uh, can you put yourself on tape and get it out here? Cause, and I thought, well, yeah, for a show like True Blood and a major character, they're not going to cast me from the tape. You know, you need to be in the room so they can feel your vibes, mm -hmm. who you are, get the, just get a tone of who you are, it's not gonna happen. So I found someone where I was, we put myself on tape and I, we mailed it out. And about a week later they called and they, uh, they offered me the role. And I just, wow. that was so trusting that wow. they had enough trust in what I was doing with the character yeah. to say, we don't have to physically have him there, we'll cast this actor just from the tape and that r from very rarely happens yeah. that's the tape show like mm. is that what we that was it wow. okay, I sent it in that was it that was what we sent in I know we're going to try that's to pull awesome. up if we if we cannot if we have your permission we'll, we'll put it in our, we'll put in our description on the video so you could watch that wonderful sure. mm -hmm. I it was like I said it's your eyes it's this you, you tell everything so well and you did it again tonight you know from that moment from when they're okay I want to ask what what are the writers trying to tell you here in this scene where James is talking about is it was it James and Lala tonight where when they when they drank the V that it makes them see other dimensions mm. are we talking about other is this kind of like a LSD type of trip kind of thing is that what they're trying to talk about because James said James said it tonight oh he's talking about other substances yeah oh well that's oh. I think comes from the fact that uh, James and Lala in the past episodes have tripped yes. together mm -hmm. and they both kind of have a exit essential relationship yes. with the world where we know that's in their history yes. to so do drugs to get that. high to do these things and so when the mm -hmm. fact that Lady May brought up that she had some out of body experience James is more willing to believe mm -hmm. in the truth of mm -hmm. it okay and that's what I wanted you to find it. out yes. what is the truth yes is the truth the V what they see with the V I don't think we'll know the truth until we follow them all the way right. along the right. journey we gotta get the full answer um, still somehow it's allowing her to see something and I, yeah. for yes. some reason it's translating into her and she's allowing her to go beyond this mm -hmm. realm and enter mm -hmm. some other realm however yeah. for her specifically so oh look, oh, look we have it on yeah, it. It. if you're watching yeah, this live check it. this moment out god works in mysterious ways Terra May. but all the trials and tribulations he puts us through are part of a master plan he has for every one of us now this devil woman that came to you she introduced you to a man and together they tried to pull you down into a world that no godly person should ever have to be a part of. But all of it, all of it, was part of God's plan to lead you back to your mommy. I believe it. Wow. Thank you. Oh, thank oh, you you don't have to thank me, Miss Thornton. You're a part of my congregation. And my congregation is like my family. Like my family. No, thank you, Tara, for reminding me of the healing powers of God. Let it make you think Tara could, once she's feeling up to it, of course. Would you consider having her come talk to the congregation some Sunday morning? Not too many folks who walk with the devil and come out the other side to talk about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's five years ago. It's five years ago. No, it's just interesting to see that perspective. Yeah. So just people at home watching and getting yeah. to see that moment of how you yeah. 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 But you know, the words were great. Again, Alan Ball, you know, I'll do a Alan Ball mm -hmm. show anytime because he gives you these this language and these words that it's just so meaningful that if you honor them, if you really just let them not trying to manipulate them like I gotta really you know, suss this up now I gotta really kick this up just trust in the words so having a writer like and a creator of the show like Alan Ball it's, it's I mean writers like Alan Ball Aaron Sorkin people like that mm -hmm. who just write beautifully for actors so that was I was just amazed that they would trust enough to say let's cast them that they didn't need to bring me out or at least see me or be in the mm -hmm. same room. To in with a way me. verify. Yeah, yeah, how tall is he? Is he does he have a twi I mean, just to, just to trust. But no, they and I always respected them uh, th them about that. That they would just they trust enough to go. That's the actor we want. That's the approach we want to the character. Mm -hmm. Book them. And um, that's fantastic. yeah, that's five years ago. Did that mm -hmm. continue on to your work on, Absolutely. on set? Like, Absolutely, it does come down. to I was always afraid they'd take this Southern Black Minister and do something. 
kind of stereotypical with him. I was always afraid that, you know, the plane is kind of person to be fire and brimstone and mm-hmm. there'd be a lot of you know, success to him and amen and all that. But no, the direction I wanted to take was just the opposite. I wanted to appeal to actually people's hearts and minds and just not their emotions. Mm-hmm. So, and they've never veered from that course. They've always let me have that kind of space in my speeches or the monologues or the, mm-hmm. the, the, the sermon. They've never tried to say, oh yeah, yeah guess what mm-hmm. I'm making really? Mm-hmm. Not at all. And, I, and again, I, I so respect them for that. They, they let them be real and not mm-hmm. a, a stereotype of what a, a black Southern Baptist minister is supposed to be, yeah. which is what, you know, always exhorting the crowd to do something now. Mm-hmm. Just, just let him, he's an ordinary man in extraordinary circumstances. Mm-hmm. That's very well. Yeah, and it's testing well his faith, mm-hmm. you know, the community tests his faith, uh, the relationship he has with his God and, and extending himself to this, to this community. And those are all very real. So folks, people have seemed to react to that. They always found the work in that but I do. I agree with what you said. I really like the fact that you humanized that character and the fact that they didn't make it into a caricature of what they could have done and made it over the top and made your character, you know, like you said. And I think that was really great. The fact that they've not done that and allowed you to kind of humanize them and and make that's why it makes it, it makes it a pleasure playing with them. My yeah. question is, I feel like so many of the scenes that Reverend Daniels has are they're very strong. They're very serious. He's always in the mix of Lady May, and it's. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always such. There's a deeper sorrow in there. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you bring the like the joy into the scene or the joy to the characters? Does that stem from just loving Lady May, or like, do you add laughter behind the scenes? Because I just feel like being absorbed so much in that place of like trying to get her mm-hmm. to be safe, to be good, mm-hmm. must be very draining. You know, I, because Adina and I get along so well, because I mm-hmm. trust her so much that I know that I can emotionally put myself out there, mm-hmm. and she's just gonna take care of me okay. <laughs> she's just going to take care of me so i can i can take Trust it i mean yeah, we'll throw little jokes at each other every now and mm-hmm. then but we can always get back to where because we're not afraid of where we're going we're we're pleased about where we're going and we trust each other where we're going so it's 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 sort of easy working yeah. with the right person miss mm-hmm. porter and now talking about the scene tonight so oh mm-hmm. getting into that so what do we see with so letty may is looking for what t- uh, Tara takes him to their old house, I believe. Before the snap mm-hmm. out of it moment. Yes. yes. Which is what I'm going to title Yes, where it. she was a baby. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my question to you, is this the last we've seen of Reverend D? She's saying no. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I don't think so either. I don't think nah. so. Mm-hmm. I think that one of, like, because I believe in the love that they have, because I believe in the fact they do have a relationship, I don't, personally, I don't think the Reverend Daniels can walk away. I think that he is trying to make her make a choice, and I think that he wants her to walk away from this path, but I think that he's not just going to wave off. Right, abandon like he hasn't her, waved basically. Off yet, right. And I feel like she is being honest with him, and I trust in their connection. But Lenny um, May has to find this out. It's no, her she does. Baby, it's her but, do- but that's what I'm saying. I almost wish she would have added the fact, like, I promise, like, when I'm done finding whatever question I have, I'll I'm coming okay. back to you. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> like, that's it. Right. Mm-hmm. I just need to do this. You know, I, I promise you, that's it. I got to get my answers, and then I'm done. I'll never touch V again kind of thing. You know, that's that's the one. But I, I do believe No that assurances. That, yeah, they no I know, assurances they didn't. But I don't think that, that, that he would just completely abandon her and walk away completely because she's got to figure that out. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering. Are, are and that would be too easy to do that, too. Are we as fans, are we going to find out truly how Tara died? I don't even know if it's about that anymore. No, I agree with you. I don't know if it's um, about that anymore either. I nice. think pulling mm-hmm. Lala into it and pulling over Daniels into it is making it seem like this is more of a search, a scavenger hunt for a higher knowledge. And as much as Tara's death was interesting and we were all confused about what actually happened, I think it's bigger than that. And they pushed it off for, like, they're pushing it mm-hmm. off for seven episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just going to be like, Oh, she died because this. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it has to relate to the bigger arc of the show. I don't think it's just in between the relationship between Lady May and Tara. I agree. Which, if if the reveal was that Lady May killed mm-hmm. Tara or that uh, some friend killed Tara, like that's just about them. They were stretching it on so much that I think it has to be bigger. And, it and has to. Um, it's it's mm-hmm. going to impact more people. It is. It's more important and the fact they're going back to her childhood like there's reasons like now there's going to be something else it's not just how did she die because now they're bringing her mm-hmm. back to the childhood home there's a bigger 
thing that was going on. Gary has a tiny smile on his face. No, I'm just <laughs> listening to what people perceive. Yeah, because he's like, there. it's completely wrong. <laughs> what? Or, you guys are crazy. Uh, no, just for your <laughs> perception. I'm just, I yeah. love to hear the perception of uh, what's going to happen. What I have to hand it also to is to Tara in this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Throughout this show, she has had to do so many different things. Mm. Like today, the speaking in tongues and the digging <laughs> in the ground. I was getting like flashbacks to Mary Ann. And like, mm-hmm. the, like just walking on the set all the time and then being like, yeah, so today. My routine is great. <laughs> um, great. Uh, today we want you to dig in the dirt. Just repeatedly. Yes. For a while. Just we'll, go for we'll it. We'll do 97 takes of you digging <laughs> in the dirt. <laughs> So, and one with a snake, yeah, and you know, right. all around. Well, uh, the snake I, moment always. <laughs> not <laughs> a fan. Or snakes now. Not me either. Uh, I agree with you. I so we all agree we're going to see this. She's up there on the cross, and I'm, yeah. I'm reacting to the snake coming down no. more than anything else. Ooh. <laughs> now, what is it like? Okay, you know, you, you I believe you've what, done uh, over 100 films or 100 different um, sh- uh, projects. Television and film, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So do you still, what do you, when you see yourself on screen, do you still get a certain feeling, or is it just like, ah, oh, that's, you know. I do. Well, you know, again, I always wish I had done it better. It's, it's kind of I always wish I had done it better. Like I, I immediately I go to the floor. It's like mm-hmm. wow, I, I wish I had done that better. And mm-hmm. I don't know what better would have been in that mm-hmm. moment. I mean, I've done enough to know now, Greg. You're just mm-hmm. second guessing yourself. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. truly, you just want to do, you want to do a great job. So I always think, oh God, what could, what else could I have done? Might I have done something to change the tempo, the time of the scene, or what that line is saying. In that, addition to mm-hmm. all of the films and TV you've done, you also do a lot of theater. Do a lot of theater. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I have a theater company, in fact, there, with well, my colleagues. How do you nice. pull your time between the two? Like, do you reserve a certain part of the year? I have a terrific yeah. wife, <laughs> <laughs> who's an actress, Verilyn Jones, Daniel. Dad, because yeah. we run we run the company with another married couple, and uh, you know, uh, so many of us started with theater. We started. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, not to be a snob on the East Coast with theater. Mm-hmm. So that still is a testing ground for us because every night there's a different audience and your reactions might be silent and dead or they might be uproarious. So that still is a testing ground. It's still mm-hmm. an actor's medium in that mm-hmm. once you, this curtain goes up, it's just you and the audience. There's no t- takes, yeah. there's no fixing in post. Mm-hmm. There's no, that whatever it is that night, you drop the line, you go up on a line, whatever happens. So for, it will always be a testing ground and, mm-hmm. and, and a chance. I get I'm stronger as an actor, technique wise, craft wise, skill wise, because I do theater. Of course. And, and now we started a company. Uh, some colleagues and I, Jason, Yvonne, Verilyn, and I, we've all started a company called Lower Depth Theater Ensemble. Lower Depth Theater Ensemble. Yeah. What type what of stories uh, is your company drawn to, or do mm. you guys have like a mission for going towards their place? We look at uh, the, sort of. We look at plays through the lens of the artist of color. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not exclusively an African American company, mm-hmm. but we try and look for international stories. Mm-hmm. So it's like we did a play last year that took place in this very poor, dangerous and section of and violent section of London mm-hmm. with uh, mm-hmm. uh, Caribbean people in there. So we we look for unusual stories mm-hmm. that has have to do maybe with the Black diaspora okay. all around the world, mm-hmm. all around the world. So yeah, I love it. that's kind of our bent. And it's fantastic. Besides being a founder in this and obviously an actor, um, do you partake in other parts as like? I'm artistic a director. director directing yeah. you know, I'm the artistic thing? director and I do direct. I, I, do. Okay. I don't direct no. all the plays, but I do direct. Do you have yeah. a favorite between all of these hats you wear? I mean, between That's funny stage because actors. When I'm directing, I'm like, I can't wait to be an actor again mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. directing, you just got to be concerned with everything, mm-hmm. light scenes. Are, and then when I'm acting, it's like, okay, I can't wait to direct the next thing again because mm-hmm. uh, rather than settling on one character, I can think about the whole mise en scene. I, I think of everything. So I, I like going back and forth. Have you ever directed them. yourself? No, I, could, I don't have the... Oh, yes, and I always admire. <laughs> I admire. Uh, uh, Have you and your wife ever? Yes. Di- yes. We're about to work together now. The next play oh, I'm directing, uh, she's okay. leading. Mm-hmm. There uh, you go. The wedding band that we're doing in uh, in North Hollywood. So she's the leading. But we have we have worked together in a while because we have a child. So we've tried to. Oh. One of us keep one of us available. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you know, the kid won't write a tell all book when she's 21, <laughs> how my parents abandoned me. So we've always tried to keep it sort of one of us. <laughs> to go to story. <laughs> this story is so powerful and so beautiful. We say, okay, okay, she's going to be the lead and I'm going to direct it. And now our daughter's 15 years old, so it's a little different now. Now, does your daughter have the bug? My daughter's an amazing dancer. Oh, okay. She fell in love with so the dance. arts. So the arts, only arts. Yeah. In fact, she's in New York right now studying at uh, Alvin Ailey. Oh, in wow, the, that's, that's great. Yeah, so, you, you know, we didn't want to unduly influence her mm-hmm. uh, one way or the other because we never pushed it on her because she's around it all the time. But somehow, oh, well, my wife was a dancer too before she said going into this, uh, to this before she said into acting. She was a dancer, and my daughter's just. I thought you were the dancer. ballerina of the family. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I thought Watch you were me going dance. to say. Uh, That's what I, I can was bust going a next. move every now and then. Every now and then. Now, I wanted to ask you what 
drew you, what called you to act? I've asked that before. It's, for me, it was language, the love okay. of language. Um, my father was Caribbean. And we had, so I only say that because we were under the, the, he grew up under the British school system and they mm -hmm. always had Shakespeare in there. Mm -hmm. So when I was growing up, we had a volume of Shakespeare at home. And I remember cracking it open and not understanding a word of it, but in saying it, I fell in love with the language. Had no idea the skill, or didn't have a skill for it, but something about the language, the poetry of it. So then when I finally heard a skilled speaker saying Shakespeare, I was like, wow. Something about the power behind those words to, to just move me. So mm -hmm. language was my first exposure to acting. I just knew that's what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself having to, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, when you're on stage, you're acting to the, the back row. And then when you have a close up on camera, you have to, you know, be very aware of what you're doing your body. Every little movement. Do you, has, was that difficult for you to make the transition? I, I, I did have to learn what to do in front of a camera or not, mm -hmm. but it wasn't difficult. It wasn't difficult. So you just, usually the camera, you just trust that it's going to be there. And the audience, you have to, you're trying to reach people, mm -hmm. but the camera's right there. Yeah. So we can have a conversation just like this. And yeah. you just have to trust that that's going to that's gonna translate. So it's not hard, but it is, you do have to acknowledge it totally different in that way. But if you're telling a compelling story, you know. That's and, and I was going to say, was anyone in your family growing up, were they in the arts or were they nope. supportive of you then going and being an actor? They were supportive of me. They were supportive in a, in a frightful kind of way. Okay. I mean, they didn't quite understand mm. this whole acting thing, mm. but they never tried to stop me. Oh, they really great. supported me. So when I went to school to study it, they, they would come out and see some pretty strange plays. Mm. And me and some, <laughs> doing some pretty strange things <laughs> in strange plays, but they never try to say, Greg, you got to straighten up here. No, they just saw how much I just loved it. And oh, uh, they great. supported me all through school. Do you have a favorite strange project that you've ever been a part of? You brought it up. Some, so probably some to. German expressionist sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, where I think I played a, a rooster in one play, <laughs> I did. I, was, I had full length costume. I was a rooster. This is no. This is this is not I, a kids I, play. I, I believe you. Yes. Right. 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 <laughs> I, I, uh, and I was a rooster for uh, for, for one play. So I think we need to add this to your IMDb page because I don't think it's there. And I think there German needs to be a expressionistic picture. expressionistic, some sort of. I mean, you know, you you were so ready to climb mountains when you're younger, and you want to mm -hmm. do it all. So. They saw some pretty strange things, oh, but, but didn't drive them away. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. I was going to say, but wait, we've got the rooster. <laughs> oh, here. Let's no. pull that <laughs> Someone shot the rooster clip, full length of rooster. <laughs> now, with that said, outside of your true blood role, what has probably been your favorite role to date? Oh, father, of course. Oh. Being a dad. I mean, being a father, it's just, just amazing to take this human being and just watch her grow the way she has and then embrace the arts the way she has. And that is a role. I mean, it takes skill and it yes. takes, mm -hmm. you know, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Boy, nothing is stays the same. So being a father has rooted me uh, for an industry that is so mercurial that goes up and down all the time and being a dad. And so, you know, and with that said, I was going to ask you now, people always ask you a dream role, but I would ask you instead, how about, is there anyone you would like to work with that you haven't had a chance oh, to work tons with? tons of actors I'd love. Mm -hmm. I'd love to work with Kevin Spacey. I just think he's an amazing actor. He's awesome. And the fact that he does All right, House of Cards, so season yeah. three. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I see the work, and God, did you guys see True Detective with uh, Matthew McConaughey, mm -hmm. and Woody Harrelson, I mean. There's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people doing some really terrific work, and the cable stations have brought some really wonderful writers and actors and directors, because you don't have to, uh, commit yourself to wait a 22 season run or something. Mm -hmm. It's obviously 12, 10 episodes, 12 episodes, sometimes even six, but it's really drawn in a pool of talent that makes cable television some of the most exciting one, HBO, Netflix, on a, oh, mm -hmm. can I say that? Is that something you can say? Yeah, oh, of course. Oh, okay. yeah, they're good. And, yeah. and you can be edgier too, so, like the <laughs> network, where it's like, okay, you can't say this, you can't do that, yeah. you, you, you have a more of artistic freedom to kind right. of go of direction you may not be able Absolutely. to go. So, not saying there's anything wrong with being on a, a CBS sitcom or ABC no. or whatever, but the thing is you can go a little bit deeper and a little edgier. Yeah, yeah you can. Like and they'll give you the, and they'll give you the time and space to mm -hmm. do that. So any of those shows and any of those roles I would love to do. So with that said, honestly, you brought so much to this panel tonight. You so have. I once again wanted to extend thank a you. thank you. Mm -hmm. You guys were great so much. With, yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Watch the last four episodes, guys. Well, oh, we got yeah. one I, tiny I, segment left, okay. and that is predictions. Mm -hmm. Predictions. What do we see now, for the rest of the season? All eyes on him to see if something <laughs> no, my, by flinch. You know, okay. Poker face, poker I'll face. You know, right here. the double wedding, Holly and Andy, Adeline and Wade, and with, you know, Violet thrown in there. It's going to be one huge party, and they're going to love each other so much. <laughs> So much love. That's what I'm predicting. You are drenched in sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Scott. Well, said. well, things we actually we didn't get to watch the uh, sneak 
peek of what's going to happen. Oh, well, you did. So I don't know. So I'm going in completely. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say, yes, they're definitely, we're going to just have like a quadruple wedding. We'll get Pam and Eric. We'll get, you know, Bill and so everyone together in one big final can season. Get married. <laughs> Episode 10. That's how they're going to end it. Okay. Oh, so we're going finale, finale. And now he's giving nah. me the, he's giving me the eye. And you know how I'm a fan of his eyes. So, um, and my jacket. But and go on, jacket. please. All right. I'm going to give a, a crazy prediction. Uh, yeah, the Bill and Sucky one, yes. But there's something. I, I, I'm i going to go with, was it Scott that said that Eric, one, of, one of them wouldn't survive? Mm -hmm. I think Eric may pass. But it won't be because of the Hep V. And I'll leave it at that. I'm waiting to see. There has to be, I think there's going to be some sort of sacrifice yes, this season. Yes, that's what mm -hmm. I was And who's to. going to make this sacrifice, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure of. Um, we have maybe, we have this whole thing going on with Holly, Andy, Edel, and Wade, and Jessica's going to get involved. Mm -hmm. Like that was has been her whole thing that she was there to protect them. So you've got Jessica, and now you've got Jessica and Violet. Like, this is a mess waiting to happen on multiple levels. Yes. You have Jessica who now has to fight for Adeline because she swore to. And you've got Violet who not only probably wants Adeline because she's a fae, mm -hmm. but on top of it, this is the reason that she lost her man. Right. Like, there's going to be some issues. Yes, and, 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 I, and I think what we talked about earlier episodes that maybe Holly and Andy, one of them both, they both won't live either because it just ties it up. Like, I don't think they're going to tie up everybody's relationship so neat and nice. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that. So maybe mm -hmm. one of them won't survive either. Um, and I'm still going with that. And I feel like they've kind of set that up in this episode even more. So, Sarah, you just made me think of something. I know we gotta go, we're got we running super long yes. on time. I'm going to go with, I think Violet is going to kill Adeline. And Sookie will be the only Faye left. And since Faye, uh, since Sookie gave Bill Hep V, somehow, she, remember, she, th there's a there's a point where if she gives her final like blast, she will be Faye no more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what will happen. And in the end, she'll just be a waitress, and that'll be the end of the and show. The, the closing scene with her back at Bell we've, we've and talked about that. And she we've talked about, about that. that. We we've talked about her saying, "I'm yes. a waitress." Yes, at we the have. End. And that's it. Mm -hmm. With that said, so. Once again, a big round of applause for Mr. Greg Daniel. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Greg, where can we find? Where can you? Can your fans go to your website? Yes, I have a. Yes, I have a fan page on Facebook. Okay. And what is my Twitter? The real Greg Daniel. The real, or just real Greg Daniel. Real Greg Daniel, and make sure you put all the G's and everything in there. Yes, Real two Greg G's. That's my Twitter. There we two go. G's at the end of Greg. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Thank you so much. We're shaking yeah. hands. This yeah. is great. Scott, Thank where you. can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at sman80. That's S M A N eight zero, and I'm here on Thursday nights for our season two of Defiance. And the lovely Sarah Stratton. Hi guys, you can find me here at AfterBuzz TV, also on Anatomy of a Movie. Nice, and you can follow me at JC Rubio TV on Instagram and Twitter. So for the lovely Greg Double G, lovely mm. Sarah Scott, I'm JC. We're your after for True Blood. We'll see you next week. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.